I do not love to give less than stellar reviews, but the past couple weeks I have just been reading books that I was not impressed with. Um, my reading was not going well, but thankfully the last book I read was amazing. I was completely saved um, and it, it turned around the past couple weeks for me. Also, there's ice cream all over my house and driveway. More about that in a minute. So hi, I'm Talia, the Bandana Book Mom. Thank you for being here today. Um, let's just talk about the ice cream first. My daughter had a doctor's appointment um, that went well and my mom was watching the twins. So after the appointment, I said, hey, let's go get some ice cream. So we got the ice cream, I got a milkshake. She got a little like spoon ice cream thing and um, pulled in the driveway as I'm going to get my ice cream out of the car, my milkshake, I like dropped it in the driveway. Somehow it flew up on my shoe, like on the side of my shoe. And then I like kind of dropped my coat into it. So I'm, so the driveway is ice cream, my pants are ice cream, my, my shoe is ice cream, my coat is ice cream. So I tell my daughter, I'm like, okay, there's ice cream here. Be really careful. I'm going to try to get into the house with all this mess. And then she dropped her coat out into the ice cream and then <laughs> stepped out of the car into the ice cream. So then like, we're both just trying to get into the house, like with just ice cream everywhere. <laughs> like we come in and like, I thought I had had it like off her shoe and it was like no tracked in like through the carpet and then I like was carrying my coat in and I dropped it on like the main rug like in the house it was just a mess there's just ice cream everywhere and I was like this could only happen to me most of the ice cream's cleaned I still have some laundry to do but here we are it's time for a recent reads video so three books in a row that I was not super impressed with. So let's get that out of the way first and then we can talk about the book that really, really, really um, made my day. So first of all, City of Brass. I don't even have it anymore because I gave it back to the library because I DNF'd it. You guys, I just did not like it at all. Um, and I was really excited about it. Like I was really excited to read it. It sounded really good. And I feel like I came to like this crossroads like, you have to decide, Talia, are you a booktuber who DNFs or not? Um, because it's one thing to be just like reading on your own and picking up a book and not liking it and putting it down. It's another to be like talking about these books I'm reading and oh, I'm so excited and then like, oh, it just kind of disappeared. Um, or pushing through all the way to a book I don't really want to read. And I knew I did not want to read City of Brass anymore um, because so basically I started reading it as a physical copy and then I switched to audiobooks. So I was listening as I was doing dishes and stuff. Um, and one day I was doing dishes, listening to it. And then I got interrupted um, by one of my children. So I, you know, talked to them for a couple minutes and then I went to turn the book back on. And right before I was going to hit the button, I was just like, I really don't want to listen to this anymore. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, Talia, like, if you don't want to listen to it, you don't have to. There's tons of other books out there this one's not for you. That doesn't mean it's not for other people, um, but it's okay that it's not for you. Um, so I DNF'd it. So basically this book um, starts with a girl and she is in Cairo, Egypt, and she's like a con woman. She has kind of a magical power um, where she can tell by looking at someone if, how they're feeling, if they're sick, um, things like that. So she kind of uses that to like take advantage of people. Um, and sometimes she gives correct diagnoses, sometimes not, and she sends them to her friend um, to give them medicine to like make money off of them. She also does like pretend healings. So people that are like possessed, she like pretends to heal them, but also kind of has the power to heal them. Um, so I don't know, it just, it started weirder than I thought it was going to. And then um, she ends up summoning this like crazy warrior on accident to come and then she starts getting attacked by all this crazy stuff and like I don't know this is right this is not even spoilers this is like the first like 50 pages like just all this crazy stuff starts happening and it was just more than like it was just different than I thought it was gonna be I don't know so then they're traveling and trying to get to this city um 
and then it kind of flashes into the city and you're following the story of a guy who is living in the city already, um, the city of brass where they're trying to go. Um, and it was really hard for me to like learn so many new terms and words. Like everything was just a new word. Like there was all these groups of people that were new words and like the cities and the hierarchy and the political structure. Like it was just hard for me to follow. I just could not get, I could not get into it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I made it 25% in and that's when I gave up. So if you really feel like I should push farther and go back into it, leave that in the comments and I will consider um, some point down the road, not right now, um, because this book did have a lot of good, um, good reviews on Goodreads. So I was just surprised that I was just not into it. So there it is, City of Brass, DNF. Next, I read The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So I had read the first book last month in this series, um, The Inheritance Games, and I loved that book. I gave that book five stars. I um, So that's about a girl who's living um, in poverty, really, really poor, like living in her car, and she gets a summons to um, go to this will reading for a guy she's never met and she has no idea who he is. Um, so basically she goes, she learns that she has inherited most of his money, almost all of his money, like billions and billions and billions of dollars. And she has to um, live in a house with his family for a year in order to get the inheritance. So um, it kind of goes from there. There's a whole bunch of puzzles she has to solve and she's trying to figure out like who this guy was, why he gave her the money um, and all the, there's four grandsons who are trying to figure out as well. like why did our grandfather write us out of the will? Um, so super good. I loved that one. I thought it was really well done. I loved the ending. Um, so I was excited to read this. However, it just didn't compare. I, I mean, it, there was still good parts. Like there was still some good puzzles and there was a couple parts where I was like, oh wow, that's good. But overall I was underwhelmed. Um, there was a lot more like teenage angst romance in it that I thought there that there was in the first book um which doesn't bother me in particular um because it's YA and I understand I'm not a YA anymore so it's not I'm not the target audience um but there was just some parts that I was like I literally rolled my eyes I was just like really um so I don't know maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's just me some of it I was just like that's just silly um and I felt like it detracted from the story I felt like it was just kind of like I don't know. I didn't care for it in this, in this one. Um, I also, there was just a couple things that I was like, I just don't know that that would ever really happen. Not in regards to the romance, but in the way that like the story went. So without the romance, probably like a four. Um, but with the, with the teen awkwardness, like three. So I was disappointed. She has another book coming out in this series that I will read because I am curious enough to see what happens. And I hope that it is better than this one. Um, okay, I know this is like depressing. Like, let's just talk about all the books that were blah. We're almost done. The Unhurried Homeschooler was also blah. And all I'll say was I think like, it's a simply merciful short book on homeschooling. Like you just can't say very much of value in like 50 pages or whatever it was. And like half the beginning was her talking about like how she doesn't think you need to teach your kids to read and stuff until they're like seven or eight. And I just, there's lots of ways to homeschool and none of it's right, none of it's wrong. Like there's, well, probably some of it's wrong, but, um, and I'm gonna be a brand new homeschooler. So I know there will be a learning curve and that I will learn things um, that I didn't even know I was going to learn um, on this journey. But I, I know I'm gonna teach my kids to read earlier than that. I know I'm gonna be more structured. Um, so this had a couple good little like tidbits, but for the most part, I was just like, meh. So that's where I was at, like depressed after reading three books. Well, not really reading three, reading two and a fourth. Um, and then I picked up Agatha Christie and then there were none. And things just got better. You guys, this was a five star all the way. This was my first Agatha Christie book that I ever read. Um, I loved it. I loved that it was so, it was written so well, like, but it wasn't, I feel like a lot of times authors, especially with mysteries, they feel like they have to like give you a whole bunch of just like 
words and information and like backstories of this that and this book was so straightforward she's like here's the 10 characters they're going to an island and then they start dying one by one and they're all trying to figure out who's killing who and what's going on um it was so straightforward i feel like because of that it should have been easy to solve but i didn't it at all like it got to the end and i was like what um so yeah i really liked her style of writing I just thought it was really well put together and I will definitely, definitely, definitely be picking up more Agatha Christie books. So I'm very excited about that. Things are also going much better in my reading this month. Um, my audiobook I'm listening to right now is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, I think. Um, I am loving that. It's like the complete opposite of City of Brass. Like I can't wait to click the play button when I'm doing dishes or sweeping or whatever um to hear what's gonna happen next in that story and i heard it described as like a modern day rumpelstiltskin um but i don't really see that in it quite yet it's basically um starts with this girl she and her family are very very poor her father was a money lender who lent out um all their money and basically can't get it back from any of the people he lent it out to so they are just living in extreme poverty and one day she gets tired of it and decides she's going to take over his business and get the money back. Um, so it's about her story and then another girl who she ends up employing um, to work for her because her father squandered all of his money away that he got from her family. So the family's kind of inter intertwined. Um, and it's about her starting to earn pennies and then starting to get more money and convert it into silver and then convert it into gold um, just by building her wealth. And then there's some magical elements that start coming in um, to the story as well. So I love it. It's so much, um, so much better than City of Brass. <laughs> um, and they're very, very different stories. I'm starting to realize though, I like stories that are more rooted in like reality and then have little bits of magic than stories that I have to learn like the whole entire world and like all the different words for all the different people and all the different things in it. And it's just hard to follow for me. I like more when it's like, this is reality and here's the, the little bits of magic um, that are pulling in and out of reality. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. I'm also reading Percy Jackson and the Olympians by Rick Riordan. Um, and I'm really liking this as well. I just wanted to pick up some easy middle grade um, after the last couple weeks. And um, this obviously has been around for quite a while and is recommended by a whole bunch of people. And super cute. It's about... Um, Percy Jackson, he is living his normal life and then he eventually is at a camp and then he is accused of stealing Zeus's lightning bolt and has to go try to find it. And it has all this like, you know, Greek mythology woven into it and it's just super cute. Definitely written for middle schoolers. So some of the jokes are like cheesy middle school stuff, but it's, it's really cute. I'm liking it so far. Um, and then my book club, my book club book for this month that was chosen is the first book in the Outlander series um, by Diane. I cannot remember the last name now. Um, so I'm reading that as well. The jury's still out on that. It's not a book I would normally pick up. So I'm actually e-reading it, which I never read e-books. I love to have the book in my hand, um, but like I couldn't get it on hold from the library right away. Um, and I didn't really want to audiobook it because I'm already listening to Spinning Silver. So ebook was the way I could get it the fastest from the library without spending any money because it's not one I wanted to purchase for my collection at this point. So we'll talk more about that later. That's all I have for today. I hope you are doing well. I hope you have time today to pick up a book and do some reading. And if you are having a bad hair day, just wear a bandana.